Hi everyone, here's what's bothering me today. So recently I finished reading this book, Hate Land, by Daryl Johnson, a long hard look at America's extremist heart. Overall, a relatively solid read and not that heavy, like it's pretty quick to get through in my opinion. Um, I feel it was kind of rushed because there's definitely some uh, editorial mistakes that I spotted, but there's a recurring theme in that book and he never quite makes the connection or makes the jump, which I would have loved to see. He accurately details all the sort of history of America's extremist movements, where they came from, what fostered them, kind of, you know, the roadmap to how we get to where we are today. But what he sort of begins to touch on, but never fully brings into focus is that a lot of that has to do with the unfair capitalist system that is in America. He rightly points out that in the earliest days of um, radicalization with a lot of rural white farmers with a, a group that was known as Christian Identity, that had to do with Christian Identity helping to provide a support network to farmers who were losing their farms, becoming bankrupt, and there was like a huge problem with uh, rural suicides of farmers just taking their own lives because they couldn't make ends meet in that current political and economic climate. And so this group, Christian Identity, that professes that Christians are actually the true Jews and it's white people that are going to save their... It's, it's a thing. It's weird. They, as an organization, saw an opportunity to reach out for mutual aid and in turn increase their membership and radicalize a lot more people. When they touched on the neo-Nazis. They talk about how it was providing them an outlet and a sense of brotherhood and community, especially because a lot of these people had been facing hard times. They couldn't hold down a job. They had little education. They felt ostracized by society for their, you know, admittedly outdated beliefs and various other factors at play. He accurately points all these things out, but he doesn't tie it back to how the system we currently have fosters that. In terms of a spoiler alert, kind of, for the end of the book, he just says that if we want to help begin addressing this, we need to start reaching out to some of these crazies. So, you know, reach out to, for us right now, the Proud Boys and the Alt-Right and Neo-Nazis and try and welcome them back into the fold. And granted, some people have success. There's that um, relatively well-known African-American activist who actively gets people out of like the KKK and white pride groups and neo-Nazi groups. These are good things. And I think at the end of the day, as difficult as it might be, it is worthwhile to at least make the attempt. You're not going to reach everyone, but if you can save and pull out more people and then they can help pull out more people, that is a great thing. But it doesn't help. It's like to use an analogy, this is like pulling people out of a burning building while also not trying to put out the flames. What allows the flames to fester and grow into this rage that we see among white people in the United States and in the West in general, there are valid reasons for why they are feeling frustrated and dispossessed and feel like they're just spinning their wheels in life. It's because the system is inherently unfair to all of us who are not part of the capitalist class. That is a valid concern, and it needs to be addressed. But he doesn't mention that in his book. He doesn't mention how, you know, beyond providing support and helping try and get people out of these, you know, right-wing or just extremist in general groups, you need a support network. And granted, lots of people are trying to make support networks and maintain the mutual aid networks, and these are good. But wouldn't it just be better if we could have something of a societal transformation that is equitable to all people to prevent this? We've seen in study after study, in nation after nation, when you provide housing and adequate wages for people, they are happier, less stressed, more productive, and crime rates drop. Domestic abuse rates drop. So many of the ills that plague our modern society drop when you take care of the people in that society. Yes, try and reach out and bring people away from the darkness. This is good. But to have an actual system in place that prevents it from getting that bad in the first place, a preventative system, is ultimately less costly at the end of the day. And I wish more people realized that. And the fact that many don't, including this author, is what's bothering me today.